psychyogi.org. Kanta and Heritage 1990, a multivariate model of sexual offence behaviour, developments in offender profiling. Background, this is the third study we will be looking at from making a profile as part of your OCR forensic psychology course. It is further categorised into both bottom-up and geographical profiling. There's something called the criminal consistency hypothesis, which is key to the bottom-up approach to profiling. It has two parts, spatial consistency and interpersonal consistency. The criminal consistency hypothesis suggests that a criminal will stay somewhat consistent throughout their criminal careers. An axe murderer will likely not switch to a hit and run style of murdering. Spatial consistency refers to a criminal's likelihood to commit crimes in areas in which they are familiar. Interpersonal consistency refers to a criminal's likelihood to commit crimes which reflect their level of social competency. Circle theory is based upon the assumptions that criminals will commit crimes in areas they know and not exactly where they live. The crimes they commit will be around their home or base. The theory suggests that if all the crimes of an offender were placed on a, cir on a map, then a circle will be easily formed, so you could draw a circle around the outer crimes and the criminal is likely to reside within that circle if they are a marauder. There's two types of criminals which are suggested, marauders and commuters. Commuters move to an area, as in they commute to an area to commit their crimes, but you'll find that there will be a centre of that circle. You could also find them from this if you know that they're a commuter which I explain more in the video on circle theory, which is on the page on Psychyogi, Cantor and Heritage. So now we're looking at the aim. To identify behaviour patterns from similarities between offences. Method and design. A content analysis of 66 sexual offences from various police forces committed by 27 offenders was conducted to find 33 offence variables which were linked to potential behaviour characteristics. For example, variable 2 was surprise attack. It was possible to say yes or no to each variable. Sexual offences are chosen because there is a large amount of information available about the perpetrator's actions. The data was analysed using small, a smallest space analysis which was used in Cantor's previous study that we looked at, um, Cantor 2004 et al. Findings. The following variables were found to be central to the 66 cases of sexual assault. Surprise attack, vaginal intercourse, impersonal language, victim's clothing disturbed, and no reactions to the victim. This suggests a pattern of behaviour where the attack is impersonal and sudden. The victim's response is irrelevant to the offender. Less central were a further five elements of the attacks which have been found to be important in other research. These are were attempted intimacy with the victim, sexual behaviour, overt violence, aggression, impersonal interaction and criminal behaviour and intent. Cantor calls this five-factor theory. All five of these were found in 100% of the rape cases. Conclusions. Cantor believes that the usefulness of this method is that all five aspects have now been shown to contribute to all sexual offences, but in a different patterns for different individuals. This can lead to understanding how an offender's behaviour changes over a series of, of offences, or more usefully, still establish whether two or more offences were committed by the same person. This has become known as Cantor's five-factor theory.